So it's a clear fact that one of the many ways to communicate with your audience is via a blog. There are millions and millions of blogs out there, but the reality is that many of the blogs out there fail to ever become an authority in their niche, and we don't want that to happen to you. Creating a blog surrounding a topic that is in high demand and becoming an authority can have great benefits. Not only are you able to share with the world solutions to their problems, but you are able to monetize it. However, that said, many people make the mistake of focusing on the monetization first rather than actually building it up and creating the authority first. But how do you go about creating authority when you don't really have it right now? Well, obviously authority has nothing to do with wielding a hammer and banging it on somebody and being their boss. It's ability to gain their trust by providing immense value. Would you like to learn how to do that? Would you like to learn how to create a profitable blog that provides a continuous profit stream? And more importantly, would you like to learn how to ensure that you have unlimited amounts of in-demand topics to talk about? How would you like to learn how to create a profitable authority blog in any niche that converts? Well, this video course will take you behind the scenes to help you understand how to create a profitable blog the right way. Now here is a quick video overview of what's inside this video course. Video one is the introduction. Video two is finding a profitable niche. Video three is a longevity test. Video number four is an authority test. Number five is a competition test. And number six is a product test. So videos one through six will help you figure out if you have a profitable niche that can actually last for a decade or more. And then of course, video number seven, we're going to talk about topic creation and generation. Video number eight, we're going to talk about blog post creation and video number nine, we're going to talk about blogging platforms. So as you can see, we're really not going to talk about how to create a blog right away because I feel like what I've seen over the years is that most people go ahead, they create a blog. And then once they get the blog up, they've invested money into the theme and all of that and the brand and they don't know what to do. So we're going to combat that to make sure that you don't make those same mistakes and that you're able to succeed. Hello and congratulations on getting access to this video course. And I'm going to walk you through how to create a profitable authority blog. So this is video number one, which is the introduction and getting started. Now, before we jump right in, I want to jump in and talk about mindset because I want to make sure that you're in the right mindset before we get started. Because I'm a big believer that if you're in the right mindset, you'll be able to implement everything at a faster and more accurate pace. So what I found over the years is that too many blog owners fail because they focus on the misconception or the belief that if you have the right tools or you have the software tools or the WordPress platform or the right blogging platform, then you'll succeed. But the reality is that really it's not about the blogging platform. It's not about the software tools or any of that. What really it's about is figuring out what your strategy is. If your niche that you're going to go into is going to be profitable or not, that's really what it's all about. So the secret is to start with a niche that you are truly an authority in. So this video course is all about that, how to find your niche, but how to make sure that you're in fact the authority. And we're going to put things through a test and you'll see several tests in the beginning to make sure that is true. Plus, in addition to that, you want to make sure, of course, that it is profitable, that you have enough products to sell and that you can increase your revenue stream. So what I want to do now is give you a quick overview of what's inside this video course. So you know exactly what to expect. And then of course, you'll be able to see all the pieces of the puzzle and then you'll be able to implement them at a faster rate. So this of course is video number one. Video number two is find a profitable niche. So we're going to do some brainstorming. And video number three, we're going to do the longevity test to make sure that that niche can last a long, long time for decades, literally. And video number four, we're going to talk about the authority test to make sure that you are indeed the authority. How do you know? 
we'll ask some questions that you can answer. We'll put you through some tests to make sure that is the case. And of course, number five is going to be the competition test to make sure that you have enough competition. And video number six, we're going to talk about the product test to make sure that everything is going to be profitable for you in the long run. Because the worst case scenario is you jump into a niche that has a high demand, but it's not necessarily profitable. And of course, video number seven, we're going to talk about topic generation. So we're going to take the niche that you decided upon, and I'm going to show you how to use free tools to gather intelligence to figure out what actual topics are in demand. Because it's easy to create topics out of our head, and that's great. And some of those might be high in demand, but we can verify these with actual tools online. And video number eight, we're going to talk about blog post creation. Video number nine, we're then going to talk about blogging platforms. So if you notice, a lot of videos one through eight is all about strategy, planning, getting it right. And once you do that, then you can move on to setting up your blog. Then you can think about the software tools and all of that. All right. So with that said, let's move on to video number two. Welcome back. This is video number two, and we're going to talk about how you can find a profitable niche that you are an authority around. And as we're thinking about that, I want to ask you a question, which is what are you interested in? What are you passionate in? And I want you to keep that question in your mind. And the reason being, is because I want to address an issue. And the issue is that many people tend to choose niches based on profitability. And that's the wrong way. Here's what you should look for. You should look for something that you're interested in, because if you look at the profitability or the money first, you will fail eventually because you'll eventually run into a roadblock and you will get overwhelmed, it'll be boring, and you'll have no interest in it to continue. And another thing is you won't look like you really know what you're talking about. So start with your passion. And the great thing about that is that people will trust you. They will begin to see that you're passionate about it. Have you ever been to maybe a blog or a webinar or, or something of other? And you have noticed that the speaker is not passionate whatsoever. They just feel like they're there because they're there. Does that really make you want to trust them? If they are not really passionate that you can tell that they're, they don't really know what they're talking about, but they're just trying to get by that probably turns you off, right? Well, same goes here. You don't want to portray that in any way. But what I'm trying to get here is that you want to portray yourself as the expert. And to do that, you need to be passionate about the niche. So over time, like I said, things will get boring and you will lose sight. And once you've lost sight, that is the beginning of failure. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set you up for success. Now, here's an example here. A while ago, I considered a niche called scrapbooking. I had zero interest in it, but I did this because I was trying to follow the money. What happened was it flopped, it died. So what I realized over the last decade was what gets you over the roadblock is being passionate about the niche. So here's my recommendation to you. And I want you to take this exercise and just go ahead. Step one, just pull out a pen and paper, pause the video if you want to, and just sit down and just begin to jot down all of your hobbies, things that you've invested money into, things that you've been passionate about. Maybe it's something that your family's passionate about. Think about all the pains that you've been through or your loved ones have been through and jot those down as well. Because let's be honest, if it's a pain, you've probably done enough research about it to know the advantages and disadvantages of certain solutions and all of that. So let's say, for example, you have had a kidney stone. If that's the case, then you, and you passed it without needing surgery, then somebody else out there is probably going to want to learn from you, right? 
So you have some sort of experience in it. You felt the pain, you felt the suffering, you've been through and done that. So you can relate to the people that are going through it. So basically think of things that you're passionate about. And if you want to pause this video and just go ahead and do that, that's fine. After you've done that, step number two is now out of these that you have written down, I want you to pick and choose the ones that you're extremely passionate about. Now hold on to this because in the next video, we're actually going to discuss how to ensure that you can make sure that you can do this for the long term and that this passes the longevity test, which is the next video. Hello and welcome to video number three. And we're going to talk about the longevity test. So here's a quick and easy short test that you can utilize to figure out if you're really passionate about the niche in the long term, because you might be okay right now, but we really want to know if it's going to last for a decade or more. So in the previous video, you created many different topics and then you chose one. Now, the fact that you're passionate about this topic means that you're more likely to succeed in the long term, but we want to make sure that is the case. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to get a timer, whether it's your phone, whether it's your watch from this topic. What I want you to do is try to jot down at least 10 to 15 different, but very specific topics around this one topic. So in other words, let's do half an hour and let's see how fast you can create specific topics around this niche. So say, for example, let's take the example of kidney stones. We can think about with kidney stones, there can be dieting, for example, certain foods create kidney stones and certain things, certain supplements can actually help pass the stone without surgery. Now, can you create 10 or more topics? So I created two out of those, or let's say, for example, lowering cholesterol, you know, we have dieting, we have exercise, we have cardiovascular exercise, we have aerobic exercise, we have other different options as well. So the, what we're trying to do is figure out how many topics you can create. So go ahead, do that now, pause the video. If you got 10, great. If you got 15, super. If you got 20, awesome. But if you got at least 10 within less than half an hour, then that's a good sign. That means that in your brain, you're able to produce topics right away and that you're actually passionate about this niche. Now, are you stuck? Let's say you tried it and you weren't able to think of anything. If you're stuck, then that kind of means that you need to move on to the next one. So look back on the list of pains and hobbies, pick another one and go through the cycle again until you find one that works. Now here's the final test. Let's say you found something that you were able to write 10 for. Is this something that you would feel comfortable writing day in and day out? Is this something that you're will willing to get educated about and increase your knowledge about read books about from other experts? talk to other people about, surround yourself with people who enjoy this topic. And would you be happy with all of that? If you said yes to all of these questions, then this might be a good topic of choice. So that brings us to the authority test next. Hello, and welcome back to video number four. This is the authority test. When it comes to being authority, you always want to be one step or one level ahead of your audience. What do I mean by that? I mean, if your audience are newbies, you want to make sure that you are at least in the intermediate level, or if your audience are intermediates, then you need to make sure that you are an expert in that niche. And the reason being is because you need to be several steps ahead to ensure that you answer their questions. In other words, you need to make sure that you can gain their trust by providing value. And that way they understand that you have been through what they are going through right now, because if you're going through what they're going through right now, they might see you as the same level as them. They don't really see you as the authority. They see you as maybe 
somebody who's a friend or somebody who understands what they're going through, but not yet has encountered the future. See what I mean by that? You have encountered the future and therefore you can give them advice and tips to help them. So people want to know essentially if you are ahead of them, because basically the reality is if you do not know what you're talking about, people can see right through you. They won't trust you. And in the end, they will not buy from you because at the end of the day, people buy from people that they like and trust. So trust is a bigger major factor here. So that's really what this whole formula is all about is how can we get people to trust you and ethically and rightfully so if you know the niche, you know the advice and the tips and you've lived it, then you're more likely to be able to connect. And by connecting, you understand their struggles. You see where if you find something that's just profitable and you're relying purely on somebody to write the content for you. So you're missing that emotional connection. So at the end of the day, if you think about it, people buy for emotion, they don't buy for logic. They justify their purchases with logic. All right. So with that said, if you're one step ahead of everybody else, great. If you're not, it might be something to think about. But that's it. Let's move on to video number five. Hello and welcome to video number five. And this is the competition test. So the big misconception is that there's too much competition. Oh no, this is not a good niche to go into. If anything, that is actually far from the truth. Having a good amount of competition means that there is a buying market. Why? Because typically what this means is the competition has paved the way they have educated the market and they've placed products out there. If the market doesn't really know what the products are all about, your competition actually has to educate the market before people actually will buy them. So basically, instead of having to educate the market, you simply come in, provide lots and lots of value, and you can move in. You can find out what your competition is doing, what your competition is not doing. Therefore is a demand in itself and actually do it. So let me go ahead and show you how to find competing blogs, spy on them to do the necessary competitive intelligence. So technically you can go to google.com and do a search for blogs in your niche. But a tool that I like to use is called buzzsumo.com. That's B U Z Z S U M O.com. And the reason why I like this is because this site literally analyzes the content that performs the best within the niche. So this really is going to help shortcut things for you. So if I go here and I type in, let's say, for example, lower cholesterol, let's see what we get. Now, one thing to note is that BuzzSumo, it is a paid tool, but it will allow you to do some free searches as well. So if you want to pay for it later, that's fine if you get really serious. But for now, as starting out, you don't really need to pay for it. So if I type this in, you can see these are some blogs or websites that are actually getting a lot of engagement. And what you're trying to figure out is what are they doing to get that kind of engagement? So they have Facebook engagement, LinkedIn shares, Twitter shares, Pinterest shares. So obviously they definitely have social media. So what I want you to do is just jot down. What do you see that they are doing that you could be doing? So let's just take a quick look at these sites and see what they're all about. And by doing so here, this is a good way to figure out topics as well, which we'll talk about later on. But let's just take a look at the sites and see what they are doing. So if we go here, it's the hearty and we can see they have different sections, one for food, one for body, one for lifestyle. And it's just these three categories. And then they have subcategories within each. So for example, food, when it comes to lowering cholesterol, there's breakfast, there's snacks, there's entrees, there's salads, there's quick and easy meals or size, there's desserts beverages, specific diet, 
brands to avoid herbs, spices, and more. So you could even jot these down if you wanted to and categorize them. And if we scroll down, we can see that this article here talks about statins don't lower cholesterol. So statins is something that it's like a, it's a drug that people use to lower their cholesterol. Um, but it, it's saying in this study that it increases cancer and memory loss risk. So obviously this is a very controversial type article and that's what they're doing to get all these likes and shares and more. Now, if we go to the other blogs and just take a look at how their site is laid out. So they have a topics. It looks like they have very, very general. It's not necessarily related to health, but they do have one section related to health. But this looks like it's just an article. But you can see the length of the article is actually quite long. It's a good, decent size article, maybe about 700. No, it looks more like a thousand words. But nowadays, your articles and your blog posts can actually get to the length of, you know, 1,500 to 1,000 words per blog post. And of course, if you have videos, that's good too to get people to actually stay. So we can see that these sites don't really focus just on cholesterol, but they focus on the overall arching view of health. Now, what this allows you to do is this allows you to create a profitable authority blog based upon a very, very specific niche. If you focus only on, let's say, lowering cholesterol or how to pass a kidney stone without surgery, then that might actually allow you to convert more sales because the person that you are attracting is more likely to be in that mindset, right? So for example, if somebody comes to this blog, they might be interested in lowering their cholesterol, of course, because of lifestyle, but they're, they might be coming here because they're interested in relationships. So it's not really targeted. So that, I think, is something that could be improved and something that you could even do yourself. So that's what I would do. I would go to these sites, jot down at least 10 or so things that they could improve and that you could follow that they are doing that is working for them. And you can compare different blogs to make sure that all of these blogs are doing the same thing. If they're all doing the same thing and they're doing really well in that area, it might be something that you can actually mimic. Hello and welcome to video number six. And let's go ahead and do the product test. Now, at this point in the time, you know for a fact that this is a niche that you want to go into. But what we need to do now is we need to make sure that we are going to be able to profit from this block. So what you need to do as far as product creation goes is figure out if you have an unlimited supply of products that you can sell to your market. Because the more products that you have, the higher your revenue stream is going to be. Now, there are different routes that you can take. You can either find affiliate products or in other words, products that other people have created and you can direct your traffic, your bloggers to, and you can send them there. And if they buy, then you get an affiliate commission. So you get a cut. Basically, if the vendor has a product, let's say a video course, and they give you 50% for every sale that you make, you get 50%. Now, the nice thing about this is you don't have to deal with customer support. The downside is you only get half of the commission. Now, if you create your own product, obviously you get a hundred percent commission. So you, you are the vendor. So you get a hundred percent of the product. Now that's the nice thing about products, but product creation definitely does take time. And a shortcut of that is what we call private label rights products. What that means is you have somebody who has created a video course or a report or an ebook or some sort of product and they are giving you the rights to put your name on it and make it as your own. So the person creating the private label product, their name is not on it. So you pretty much get all the credit. Now, if you go find a private label rights product in your niece, let's say for example, lowering cholesterol and you compile a ebook or a report that somebody can buy, or you can turn that report into a video course that somebody can buy. Either way, 
product creation or private label rights, you get 100% of the actual revenue. So here's the thing. Finding an affiliate product is great. It allows you to focus on your blog. But if you're unable to find many affiliate products, that just means that you're going to have to create your own products or find private label rights products. But I want you to understand that at the end of the day, the more products you create, the more you actually control yourself. So you actually own these products. And you, if you have five different products, you can cross sell them. If somebody buys product one, you're more likely to present them with product two, three, four, five. And if they like you, and if they like your products, they're more likely to buy the other products. And that's the beauty of this is you can pretty much do however you wish if you own the product. So what I want to do now is just head on over to Google. I'm going to show you real quick how to find products that you can sell if it's affiliate product or if you want a private label rights shortcut. So this is going to be a quick and easy exercise. Simply go to google.com and then of course in the search box, type in private label rights and then place the next word to be your niche. So in this case, if that's lower cholesterol, let's see what we get. So you're going to see PLR or private label rights. You can do a search for PLR as well. Same thing, same acronym. And you can see that, you know, this is 349 is 30 days to lower cholesterol, PLR ebook. And you want to make sure that you, you see what's inside the ebook. Now, I can't say for everything, some ebooks are created with tons and tons of high quality and some are created and they're not really good quality. So you really have to pick and choose. I mean, it's not really expensive. So in the end, at the end of the day, you can look at it. And if it's great, if it needs to be rewritten, you can hire an article writer to do a total rewrite of it. Or another thing you can do is you can head on over to upwork.com or fiverr.com, which is F I V E R R.com and find somebody to turn these articles into videos, which is something that most people don't do, but that's an extra step that you can take that really adds a lot more value. Now, aside from private liberal rights, finding affiliate products or products that have vendors who have created a product that you can promote to get an affiliate commission. You get a clickbank.com and you click on their affiliate marketplace and you type in a keyword here. So let's say cholesterol and see what we get. So out of this, we can see there's 122 products, which is a good thing. That means that we have enough products that we could potentially sell. And as you can see here, the initial sell is 2445. And that means that you're going to get that amount of money. And some of these have rebuilt. So some of these have recurring membership sites attached to it. So if you sell it once, you can get paid over and over again over the course of a few months. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to just glance really quick. You don't have to buy anything right now. Just kind of get an idea. Is there actually affiliate products out there that we can sell and promote and get a commission? And we can see that there is indeed 122. All right. So another thing you can do is you can go to Google and we can say lower cholesterol or just cholesterol affiliate program and see what kind of affiliate programs are out there for products that are helping people lower cholesterol. And you would simply go here. You would take a look at it. You could contact the vendor to get more information or even get even private access or complimentary access to the actual product to test it out, to make sure that it is good for your list. So over time, if you build a list of let's say 500 people or a thousand people over time, you have more leverage, the bigger your list is, or the more interactive your actual list is. So lists can be email lists. It can be Facebook likes. It could be Twitter followers and more, but this just gives you an idea about what is actually out there. And if you have enough products to sell on your blog for the future. Hello and welcome back. This is video number seven, and we are going to talk about topic generation. 
So it's time to go one step further and figure out a larger list of topics. Now, we obviously have a list that we created earlier, but we want to make sure that we verify that they are truly in demand. And that is something that people are asking for out on the internet. So how do you go about verifying this? Let me go ahead and show you. So there are several tools that you can use that don't cost you any money to try to figure out topics that are in demand that people are searching for. And the two sites are Google and SEMrush. Now SEMrush does cost money, but at the same time, they do allow a free search, which gives you a limited amount of topics. And as you can see here, I went to SEMrush, that's S-E-M-R-U-S-H dot com. And the keyword overview, as you can see here, I typed in lower cholesterol. So kind of following the topics that we've been talking about earlier. And as you can see here, you can choose countries, but I would advise just choose one country. And as you can see here, we scroll down, we can see phrase match keywords. So as far as lower cholesterol goes, we can see here how to lower cholesterol. We can see the CPC or what advertisers are willing to spend. And that's a good sign. If they're willing to spend money on a specific keyword, that means there is demand. As you can see here, foods that lower cholesterol, cholesterol lowering foods. So there's a lot about foods. You can see that there are other keywords as well. There's ad copies, there's organic search results. You can also use BuzzSumo as well to generate topics. And in addition to this, if we head on over back to google.com, up at the top here, if you put in the address bar a keyword, let's say for example, lower cholesterol, you'll notice that as I begin to type things out, Google will actually try to complete your sentence with lower cholesterol diet, lower cholesterol fast, foods, exercise, and recipes. Now, if I were to, let's say, type in lower cholesterol, just flat out, and I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you will see a larger list of searches related to lower cholesterol. Now, what this allows you to do is it allows you to see the high demand searches. In other words, Google's not going to show keywords up at the top unless people are actually searching for them. So if thousands among thousands of people are searching for them, that's something to be aware of. Now, what this allows you to do is it allows you to drill deeper. So let's say, for example, that we want to do a search for lower cholesterol foods and we do a search for that and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom you will see everything related to lower cholesterol foods so we can see cholesterol in almonds breakfast food list recipes how to reduce it naturally without medication so we can see that and can I get an idea of the type of person that is searching? So we can see just from this list that the person searching is more likely to want to reduce their cholesterol and with natural home remedies, with supplements, with dieting and everything naturally. So if that's the case, let's do a search again for lower cholesterol plan and see what we get. So let's scroll down all the way down to the bottom and we can see that the plan consists of diet plans, how to lose weight. So losing weight can be a factor and we can see Indian diet plan. We can see Mayo Clinic diet plan. So many different diet plans. So what this allows us to see is is allows us to see the overall general idea, which is lower cholesterol. And within that, we can see that there's things like dieting. So let's, let's just create a notepad here. So lower cholesterol. And within that, we can see diet. We can see recipes, which recipes, of course, fits into diet. 
we can see exercise. You can ask yourself what type of exercise, lifestyle changes, what type of lifestyle changes. So as you're beginning to type these out, ask yourself questions that other people would ask, like what type or what if or why or how or when. So who, what, when, where, how kind of thing. So that way you can expand upon not just the general niche and the sub niche, but you can expand upon that. So you could see this diet and recipes could become one whole vertical of just topics, tons and tons of different diet plans, tons of different recipes, different types of exercises. We have, you know, swimming, we have cardiovascular, aerobic type exercises, running, you know, how long, and as you can see here, you can really dig deeper and deeper and deeper. So just, I would say just using Google itself allows you to really dig deeper, but utilizing other tools like Sam Rush or Buzzsumo, or even going after the paid versions of these apps and digging up actual data that says, okay, this keyword is getting a $3 CPC, which means for every click somebody gets, uh, they're actually paying about $3 cost per click. All right. So that's basically all you need to do right now is just do a little brainstorming, do a little researching and create a list of topics that Google has proven to you that it is in demand. All right. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome to video number eight. And let's talk about blog creation. How do you go about creating the blog posts now that you have a list of different topics that you might want to create? Should you use videos or should you use articles or how long should they be? Now, if you took a look at the Buzzsumo examples in the previous videos, you notice that the articles were pretty long. They were about a thousand to about 1500 words for an article. And that's pretty much standard nowadays, but if you can get to a point where it's like 2000 articles and you have a video that actually will keep the retention rate of somebody who lands on your blog. So that's the recommended thing to do is to create an article and you can outsource this if you want, but I would recommend you actually try to create the blog outline yourself, because if you're passionate about it, it's going to be easier. And one little tip that I have to say to speed up the process is be using something like your iPhone. So like an iPhone, it has something called Siri and Siri allows you to voice your thoughts on your notepad and you're able to create an article at a really, really fast rate. Now, obviously grammatically everything might be incorrect, but what you can do is you can do that on your iPhone or your smartphone or even dragon naturally speaking to create the article. And then you can send it to a proofreader. I create the articles and then I send it to the proofreader because that allows me to be creative. That allows me to just push it all out. And then it allows somebody else to do the grammatical checking and the spelling and all that to make sure that it actually flows. Now, once you're done with that, what you can do next, is you can head on over to places like fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, and you can hire people to actually read your article and get them to turn it into a video. So essentially what you're doing is the video is the same as the article. And what you can do is you can add images and that way you appeal to the visual audiences, the kinesthetic and the auditory learners. There's three types of people and three different types of learning. So that's what I recommend to you. Now, as far as what the blog post should be about, well, I'm going to show you what we call the backward blog creation strategy. And I'm actually going to take an example. I'm going to show you how to write the article or at least outline it to the point that you can do it all in less than five minutes. All right. So let me go ahead and show you that right now. Okay, so the reason why I call this the backward blog post strategy is because 
what we're doing is we're moving backwards, if that makes sense. And it'll make more sense once we dive right in. But as you can see here, what you're trying to do is you're trying to find an already proven blog post. We're not plagiarizing, we're not copying anything and just want to get that out of the way. But what we're trying to do is we're looking at what is proven and extracting from that and making it more specific, making it more unique and making it better, essentially. So we find that proven blog post. And then what we do is we can break it up. So this one proven blog post could essentially become 10 or 15 or 20 even smaller blog posts that are actually more specific. So let me show you this in action. This is super, super easy to do. We're not plagiarizing by any means. So I just want to make sure we understand that and that is clear. So let's move on and let's talk about lowering cholesterol again. So lower cholesterol foods. You notice that in the previous search that we noticed that a lot of foods, a lot of natural remedies. So let's kind of focus on that because that seems to be what people are searching for. So let's just type in lower cholesterol foods and see what we get. So if we scroll down, we can see top 12 foods that lower cholesterol. And you'll notice this, a lot of articles are moving more towards 12 things or top 10 things that lower your cholesterol or top 10 uh, different types of cardiovascular exercises that allow you to lower your cholesterol or even top 10 foods that you can still eat that are tasty that can lower your cholesterol. So let's just click through here. We'll click this one here and let's just start from there. So as you can see here, it says 12 foods that lower cholesterol naturally. Now, if we take a look here, we can see that it lists different types of foods. So different categories of foods like oats. We have red wine. We have salmon and fish. We have nuts. Now we can see that while this is great and all, we can go more specific. So the question is, how do you go more specific? Because obviously the more specific it is, the more interesting it is sometimes, but at the same time, a lot of times it'll actually boost your authority simply because people feel like, okay, you, you've actually focused in on very, very specific details. So instead of saying like the top 12 different foods that lower cholesterol, what you can do here is say, for example, fish, you can say the top 10 fish that actually lower your cholesterol or top five fish that lower your cholesterol top five types of nuts because as you can see here there are many different types of nuts there's our pistachios for example that can help lower cholesterol and there are many other types like almonds that can help as well so try to go through here and just break it down so let's just go here and we can see here that it's talking about nuts oats red wine, salmon or fish, nuts, and let's scroll down to see what, what else. So we can see teas, we have beans, we have chocolate, we have margarine, and we have garlic and olive oil. So there are actually other olive oils or types of oils that can lower cholesterol. So we can do oils, and let's just start with that. So obviously oats are oats, red wine, there might be different types of red wine. So maybe you could do top five types of red wine or top types of fish, top five types of nuts and top five types of oil that lower your cholesterol. Now, Indirectly, what you're doing here is even though it is very, very specific, you're actually helping Google figure out what your site is all about. So there we go. From this one article, we were able to create four different articles. And because it's all very consistent, all we have to do now is we can go back to Google and type in, let's say, top beans to lower cholesterol. 
So right off the bat, you can see eating a cup of beans can lower your cholesterol as much as 10%. So we have navy beans, kidney beans, pinto beans, black beans, and chickpeas. That's already three, four, five. So there you go. So you can easily find other articles out there that are based on these articles. So you can hire an article writer. Of course, you can. there are many different places that you can go to to hire article writers. Fiverr.com, that's F-I-V-E-R-R.com, is one good place to go to. And another place that you can go to is Upwork.com. And you can find very high-quality article writers. And really, all you need is a few. Just start out with one. And then, of course, as you expand, you can hire a few more. But what I like to do is I like to hire a couple first and see which ones I like, the writing style and, and how well they work with you. And then you can outsource it. Or you can either do it yourself and very, very easily do it because you have it, it's more specific. The more specific it is, the easier it is to write. So for example, you know, going back to nuts, we have number one, pinto beans. Number two, navy beans. Number three, four, five. So all we need is three more, which we have those. So kidney beans, chickpeas, and butter beans. So all you have to do is simply hand this to an article writer and say, hey, I want you to write an article on the top five types of nuts that lower your cholesterol. And I want you to cover the what and the whys. So basically, this is how it goes. As far as writing a blog post to make sure that they convert, you always want to cover the what and the whys. You can cover the whens, that's fine, but you don't really want to cover the how. The how is the solution. So the solution is a how, and that essentially is what you are trying to get somebody to buy your product is the how. So you get people interested in lowering their cholesterol, they learn about the what's and why's, and now they need to learn how to do that. All right. So that's how to create a high converting blog post at a very, very fast pace. Welcome to video number nine, and we're going to talk about blogging platforms. So congratulations, you've reached the end of this video course, and now it's time to talk about blogging platforms. We're going to talk about two things, WordPress or Blogger. And the reason why I want to talk about Blogger is because I know many of you might have the temptation to use Blogger and Blogger is great and you can use both, but I recommend the WordPress being your actual blog. And of course, if you want to use Blogger, you can use it to kind of bump the rank up of your WordPress site. So let me explain. Blogger is owned by Google. It's also known as blogspot.com or blogger.com. If you go to either or site, you will go to the same site. This is owned by Google and it is able to rank super fast. In fact, you'll notice that many self-made authority figures in different niches like you are using blogger.com. And if you notice, they rank really, really fast in the internet. Now, here's the downside of blogger or blogspot.com is you don't own it. So, this means if you get banned for whatever reason, you lose your asset, right? Now that's where WordPress comes in. Ultimately, you need to have your own asset, especially if you're building a business surrounding this. This is a serious thing. So that's why we recommend WordPress and you need to buy your own domain. You need to buy your own web hosting. And usually, typically, most web hosting companies have WordPress. So you can simply log into the panel or even ask them to install it for you. And they will install it and you're good to go. So I'm going to explain a little bit more depth about WordPress. Uh, how do you find a domain? How do you go about finding web hosting? What web hosting companies we recommend? And how do you create your blog? How do you find themes? And we'll cover all of that in just a second. Okay, so in order for you to get this to work, you need to have a domain name because you need to have your own brand, essentially. 
So what you need to do is you need to head on over to a site called Namecheap.com. And what Namecheap is, is a domain registrar, which is where you can buy your domains. So you can go here and if the domain is available, you can actually get access to it. So if we say something like lower cholesterol, and I'm pretty sure lower cholesterol is taken, but We'll just do one, two, three, four, five, six. And we can see whether or not it is available. And I'm pretty sure it is just because it puts the numbers in it, but I don't recommend you do that. I just recommend that you find whatever domain that is great for you. And then of course, add it to your cart, buy it, and you're good to go. So you pretty much have completed the domain part. Now you have to get web hosting. So essentially the way it works is this. If we go back over here, you need two things. You need a domain name, which is kind of like an address. And then of course you need to have web hosting. So if you think about it, a house or apartment, you always have an address, right? And of course the address points to a house. And then a house actually has a furniture in it and you can change the app outlook of it, the design of it on all that. That's basically what web hosting is all about. So what you need to do now is you need to find a web hosting company that specializes in WordPress because you're going to be using WordPress. Now, just keep in mind that WordPress is a very intensive type software. So as you grow your WordPress site, it utilizes a lot of RAM, a lot of server processing speed um, as it grows. So that's just something to keep in mind. So what I recommend that you do, you can either go to Google and you type in top WordPress hosting companies and go from there, or you can specifically use the ones that I'm about to talk to you about. There's one site called knownhost.com. We've used them. They have one of the best customer supports as of now, and they're very, very fast. The one good thing about web hosting companies is as far as trying to figure out whether or not they are good or not is to figure out how fast their support really is. If you email them and you might want to test it out, if you contact them and they take hours and hours to get back to you, move on, move on to the next place because that's a good, good sign to figure out whether or not, you know, that's a good hosting company, but we've tested this particular host and we found that they're really, really good. So what you want to do is you can head on over to here. And what you're looking for with WordPress type web hosting is SSD. So any type of SSD is going to be really, really fast. So you can pick the $25 per month plan, for example, and this is going to be reliable because this is a reliable host. You always want to choose a reliable host. The next host that's good for web hosting for WordPress is a2hosting.com. And if you go here, you look for the cloud hosting, or you can look for the shared hosting. So if you click on cloud hosting, you can go through and, and purchase whatever you need. Uh, typically what you can do is you can start out with the very, very basic plan, and then of course move up from there. So as you can see, A2 hosting uses SSD, which is what you want. If you see any hosting that is using something like HDD, which is a regular hard drive, then you might want to pass. Uh, so for example, there are a lot of web hosting companies out there. HostGator also provides WordPress hosting. I cannot recommend HostGator. Uh, have not really had the greatest experience with them, uh, but knownhost.com is a great web hosting company that we have tested and it has been tried and true. So once you've gotten your domain and your web hosting, the web hosting company will provide you with information on how to connect the two. So they will provide you with that. And if you have any problems with that, you can talk to them about that. So basically I can tell you for a fact, known host utilizes what we call cPanel. So they're going to give you access to a cPanel, which then you can log in and of course, they will give you access to what we call soft decoulas. So what you do is you click on WordPress here. 
And this is basically an app installer. So instead of having to go to wordpress.org and install the five minute installation file, which really isn't five minutes, by the way, it's more like uh, maybe 10 or 15 minutes or even more depending on your expertise. So that's why I find this route is just a lot easier because with this Softaculous, all you have to do is simply go down, click install now, and you fill in the details, and within less than three steps, you have installed WordPress. So up at the top, if you scroll down, you're gonna see the in directory option. What this means is basically, if you want your WordPress blog to be installed on www.yourdomain.com, if that is the case, leave this blank. If you want to install the WordPress blog in a subfolder, then that's when you can actually enter a directory here. So if this case, we can just type in test blog, you fill in your site name, your description, and then of course your admin user name and password. And then of course you can choose the advanced options and then you can actually select a theme. So that's the nice thing about this particular app installer is you can Pick one, you can actually scroll through uh, many different themes. And the nice thing about WordPress is you can literally change the whole design with a click of a button. You don't have to redo everything or anything like that. So if I want to go with this one, I can click select and click install. And literally within less than a minute or a couple minutes, we are good to go. That's it. And of course, if we go to the actual blog itself, we can see the actual blog has been created. Now the app installer is going to give you access to the WordPress administrator dashboard, as you can see here. And all you have to do is literally whenever you create a post, you can go here, add new posts, and you can add new pages. You can also change the appearance by going to appearance and themes. So let's say, for example, we don't like this particular theme. We always can go to add new and we can find another theme. We can click install, for example, and it's installed. We can activate it. And if you go to the live site, you can literally, literally see that the blog design has been changed. Now, I would recommend that if you are very serious about building a long-term authority blog, that you buy a theme that actually relates to your audience. So I recommend a site, it's called themeforest.net, themeforest.net. And if you go under WordPress, you can actually find a different themes that relate to different markets. So for example, we have blog and magazine, and just because it says blog does not necessarily mean you have to use that theme. You can use a theme that is related to other different markets as well. So as you can see, it range, ranges about $20 to about $54 per theme. But these themes are very, very professional and can definitely make you stand out. And if somebody comes to your site, you wanna make a good first impression and if you do that, they are, that's one side of getting people to trust you is to make sure that your site looks professional. So that's just something to think about as well. So I'm not going to go into too much depth about how to use WordPress. That's a, a different course for a different day. There's many different types of video courses out there that will teach you how to utilize WordPress, how to manage the site and all that. But Best of all, WordPress is great because it's very newbie friendly. And once you understand how to use it, it's very, very fast and efficient to create posts, to create pages, to add images and all of that. Mm -hmm.